Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. It's time once again for another woeful dose of Warner Brothers Discovery. The next DCEU movie, entitled Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, opens in theaters on December 22nd. And in spite of the movie starring the very popular actor Jason Momoa as the titular character of Aquaman, the predicted domestic opening weekend box office for this movie is very bad. So much so that this movie is going to flop. I've been following the predictions for this movie for a few weeks, but I wanted to see which direction they would take before doing this video. And since I began following it, the predictions for this movie's domestic opening weekend box office revenue from various media sites have been dropping over time. So what is the current predicted domestic opening weekend box office for this second Aquaman movie? According to Box Office Pro, as of December 15th, Their predicted range is only $29 million to $38 million, which is less than the $39 million domestic opening weekend box office that Wonka earned this past weekend, but it is more than the $25 million domestic opening weekend box office that Blue Beetle earned in August. It's also a lot less than the $55 million domestic opening weekend box office that The Flash earned in June, as well as the $67.9 million domestic opening weekend box office that the original Aquaman movie earned in 2018, and that's before inflation. But this predicted range is within one standard deviation of the franchise average domestic opening weekend box office of $70.6 million, though towards the lower end of the range. So using the midpoint of the predicted domestic opening weekend box office range, which works out to be $33.5 million, as well as a range of average weekly drops that are one standard deviation above and below the franchise average weekly drop of 39.67%, which works out to a range from 30.52% to 48.83%, I can project that the final domestic box office for Aquaman 2 will likely fall somewhere within the following range. $68.6 million at the low end, $84.4 million at the mid-range, and $109.7 million at the upper end. In the chart, the horizontal green and orange lines represent the final domestic box office for Blue Beetle and The Flash, respectively. So, essentially, the final domestic box office for Aquaman 2 will very likely be somewhere between what Blue Beetle and The Flash earn domestically, so Aquaman 2 will definitely not become the lowest-grossing movie domestically for the DCEU. To project what this movie's final global gross box office might be, I will use a range of domestic shares that are one standard deviation above and below the franchise average of 40.29%, which works out to a range from 32.74% to 47.84%. And when I do that, I get a range of possible final global gross box office values that range from $143.4 million at the low end, $209.6 million at the mid-range, and $335.1 million at the upper end. And similar to the previous chart, the horizontal green and orange lines in the chart represent the final global gross box office earnings for Blue Beetle and The Flash, respectively. So the final global gross box office earnings for Aquaman 2 has the highest probability of falling between the earnings of those two movies. Conceivably, it might earn more than The Flash did, provided its domestic share stays below 40% and its average weekly drop stays close to 30%. But the average weekly drop is more contingent on the domestic box office, which doesn't look like it's going to be particularly good based on the current predicted domestic opening weekend box office range. Given that the production budget for Aquaman 2 is reported to be around $205 million, which, when we multiply by 2.5 to account for the 50% of gross box office ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, as well as the additional costs of marketing the movie and other miscellaneous costs that the studio pays above and beyond the production budget, we get a mid-range estimated break-even point of $512.5 million. I'm not going to include an upper range break-even point by multiplying the production budget by three because Warner Brothers is not heavily advertising this movie. But either way, it's very evident that Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is going to flop. 
But why? I believe that there is one particular reason that may very well be the largest single contributing factor as to why Aquaman 2 is going to flop. And that reason is Amber Heard. A lot of people don't like Amber Heard because of the false allegations that she made against her ex, Johnny Depp. And many celebrated, including myself, when she lost the defamation lawsuit on June 1st, 2022, that Depp had brought against her regarding those allegations, as I had talked about in a video that I had released at the time. In March 2019, a petition was launched on the website Change.org demanding that Amber Heard be replaced in Aquaman 2. Naturally, Warner Brothers completely ignored the petition, but as of the time that I am recording this video, more than 4.6 million people have signed it. That's a lot of people. And if we speculatively assume that all of the people who signed it are in the U.S. and are not now planning to see Aquaman 2 because Amber Heard is still in the movie, how much potential money do the more than 4.6 million people who signed it represent? If we multiply the number of people who signed the petition by the current average movie theater ticket price in the U.S. of $10.53, we get a figure of around $48.8 million. That's considerably higher than the current domestic opening weekend box office revenue that has been predicted for this movie. And if we were to speculatively add that to the predicted domestic opening weekend box office midpoint of $33.5 million, we would get a value of around $82.3 million. That's assuming that everyone who signed the petition may have otherwise potentially gone to see the movie on its opening weekend. Thus, if Warner Brothers had replaced Amber Heard as millions of people were wanting the studio to do, it's entirely conceivable that Aquaman 2 might be looking at a much better predicted domestic opening weekend box office than it currently is. But if I use that speculative $82.3 million domestic opening weekend box office to project what this movie might have earned with the same range of possible average weekly drops, then the final domestic box office revenue for the movie may have ranged from $168.5 million on the low end, $207.4 million at the mid-range, and $269.4 million at the upper end. And that would represent an increase of $50.8 million to $200.8 million over the existing projection and would place the projected range between the final domestic box office earnings for The Flash and 2013's Man of Steel. Not only that, using the same domestic share criteria, the movie could have conceivably had a projected final global gross box office in the range from $352.2 million to $823 million dollars which would have given Aquaman 2 a roughly 50-50 chance of breaking even instead of being a very definite flop for Warner Brothers. Again, this is all very speculative regarding the impact of not removing Amber Heard from Aquaman 2 when the studio had the opportunity to do so. But what this shows is that keeping her in the movie has had a definite negative impact on the movie's potential earnings. So going back to the original projections, Aquaman 2 is probably going to lose somewhere on the order of $177.4 million to $369.1 million in global gross box office revenue, which, when we divide by 2 to account for the 50% of gross box office ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, means that Warner Brothers and DC Studios are looking to lose somewhere on the order of $88.7 million to $184.5 million on this movie. So Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom will definitely become a contender for who will be the biggest flop, but it won't approach the losses of The Flash, The Marvels, or Indiana Jones and the Dildo of Destruction, which are currently the top three biggest flops of 2023. It's unfortunate that Warner Brothers and DC Studios have another massive flop on their hands, but they chose to keep Amber Heard in the movie when millions of people wanted her removed, and James Gunn's DC reboot announcements haven't exactly helped the movie's box office chances either. Thanks for watching today, and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, and please feel free to share a comment. 
If you'd like to help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button, and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Out Loud Geek.